hello again. I thought I'd come downtown today and go to the Riverwalk and do the Sermon of the Week this, this time. I'm wearing my shirt here, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I love this shirt. I really like this shirt. So today I'm going to give you the sermon walking around outside. And uh, maybe some of you might recognize the park right over there. I did a video where we walked through that, uh, oh, that veterans park. We might walk through there again. But uh, we're going to walk all around. And I'm going to give you a sermon from all over. Here's a nice plaque. I love history and I love stopping and reading things like that. So maybe you could pause that and read it if you want to. This is the Blackwater River and this is Milton, Florida. So today we're going to talk about dealing with anxiety. And I've been getting a lot of emails actually over the last couple of years of people that are saying, please, Brother Breaker, can you do some videos on anxiety? Um, it just seems like people are just so anxious. And it seems like a lot of people are just so stressed. And this modern high-paced world we live in, there is a lot of stress. And so I feel you. I know what you're going through. I understand. So what I thought I'd do today is go through the scriptures and show you how to deal with anxiety. Uh, we are living in a very strange, crazy, mixed-up world. No doubt. <laughs> and uh, because of that, a lot of people just feel so stressed out all the time. And I totally understand. I totally understand that. And I don't, I don't like feeling that way, but I understand. But we're living in a crazy mixed up world and because of that well there's a lot of anxiety a lot of people are distressed or discouraged or downtrodden and they say how do we how do we deal with that brother breaker well one of the ways is just get away from everything get out in a place like this i'm standing out here on a little pier and uh, there's downtown milton down there over here is a very neat thing behind me there's very few of these left. Many of them have been torn down, but this is one of the few uh, rotating train bridges. If you see there in the middle, it actually opens and rotates so boats can go through and then rotates back. And there are not a lot of those left in America, so it's kind of neat to, to see that and to have that. So today I thought I'd come out here and give you some scriptures. And uh, so what I thought I'd do is let me sit down here, maybe just read a couple verses to you. And it's kind of fun. Whoa, this thing's really moving here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Not very stable. I guess this went through the hurricane. But I'll just go ahead and give you some verses. Then we're going to talk about some stuff. Because uh, I want to talk about dealing with anxiety. And yes, oh yes, we do have a lot of anxiety. Dealing with anxiety. Let's start in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Um, it's so easy to get stressed nowadays, especially with everything that's happening. All this COVID stuff and the lockdowns, people losing their homes and their businesses and people not getting a steady job and getting paid. A lot of people are telling me they can't even find a job now. It's just, it's so sad. And of course, if you're a Christian and you're a Bible believer, you know this was all part of the plan. Amen. But in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 through 13, we read, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A lot of people email me and say, Brother Breaker, I'm just so scared of what I'm seeing happening in the world and everything that's going on. And it just, oh, I'm just, I'm so scared. And because of that, it's like this, I'm so stressed out. <laughs> You got to let it go. You got to get rid of that stress. You got to come out to a place like this where it's nice and it's quiet and, and you're away from people and, and just try to let it, you know, come off and get rid of that stress. Um, continues here. It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Verse 8. Be thou not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. We that are Christians today, we have power. And the power is the gospel. It's like it says in Romans 1.16 um, about how it's, it's the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. Verse 9, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Wow. So we have grace. You ever notice how there's people out there that have no grace? As a Christian, I have grace. I put up with other people. Now verse 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 
Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. And that's what we're doing today. We're suffering a lot. We're putting up with a lot. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Reminds me of 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study what? The Bible. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You'll never be ashamed if you believe this book. Even if the whole world is against what it says, you'll not be ashamed because you say, no, 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 I have a higher authority and he told me this. <laughs> and God is powerful and he has power. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Thank God my sins are under the blood. Amen. That's why I wore this red shirt. My sins are under the blood. Verse 13, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. So these are the faithful words. Do you realize today they're trying to change words? I left the house this morning. Every morning we get up, my wife and I, and we drink coffee. And Well, we used to watch the news. Now that's getting harder and harder because it's such propaganda. Such What a huge world we live in. You think you'd actually get some news, but you don't. You get their agenda. <laughs> the only place I can find real news is the Internet. But we heard on the news today that in a certain school they're saying you can't say mommy and daddy you can't say mom and dad oh you can't say man and woman you can and they're changing words the bible says no hold fast the form of sound words all right my mom and my dad i'm a dad i'm a human being <laughs> i'm a person i am i am who i am and you're not going to make me change how i refer to myself okay i am what i am so, folks, I just want to do right. I want to live right. And I want to follow the Bible. And the Bible tells me to hold fast the form of sound words. So, that's important. Well, I've gone about as far as I can go this direction, so I'll go back the other way. I hope the wind doesn't bother me. But uh, there's that bridge in the background. So the Bible tells us that we need to live right and do right. Well, because of all the stuff we see in the world, many people are just so... I get emails all the time. I'm just so distressed, Brother Breaker. I'm just so, oh, I'm so tired. I have such anxiety. I understand. High anxiety. I get it. A lot of people have that. How do we deal with it? Well, 1 Samuel chapter 22, 2 is a good verse. 1 Samuel 22, 2. And we read. Let me find it here. 1 Samuel 22.2. We find out that this is really nothing new. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's the end of the world. And, you know, it's, oh, this has never happened in the history of the world to any people. And no, it's a cycle. And we're seeing that cycle come to pass over again. Do you realize that? Um, if you've never read Plato's Republic, maybe you should. Plato's Republic talks about all this. And how it always starts out as a republic then it falls into a democracy and a democracy will always fail and always end in an oligarchy where a few have power and the few are the most corrupt who by deceit come in to power and then you have a timiarchy well then afterwards comes a dictatorship and we're about to see an absolute dictatorship in the world. Well, I say we, we that are Christians are supposed to get out of here before the Antichrist takes over. But for those that don't understand what's happening in this world, the Antichrist is following Plato's Republic. <laughs> the book Plato's Republic. The Antichrist is following that to a T. And America is no longer a republic as it was founded. Now it became a democracy. Now it is an oligarchy or a timiarchy and then it will soon be handed over to the antichrist a lot of people say how how on earth did biden become president and they just can't understand that and i say well i do names have meanings and i think it's interesting biden do you know why biden is president of the united states of america he's just there until the antichrist takes over because the antichrist is biden his time <laughs> yeah but it makes sense doesn't it the antichrist is just biding his time until it's his time to take over so he put that guy in there isn't that something but i told you to go to first samuel 22 2 and we read and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them and there were with him about 400 men this was in the time of david 
And in David's day, there were people that were in debt. Are you in debt? Well, debt, a lot of times, brings anxiety. You're always worried, can I pay my bills? Can I pay my bills? Oh, I don't know, can I pay my bills? And they were discontented. Are you discontented? I've, I've been very discontented lately. Uh, been just doing so much and then trying to, to plan and plan for the future and, and, and do things and everything just seems to fall through. Every plan I make doesn't seem to work out. And it's just like, Lord, it's just the world we live in. You just can't do things the way you used to sometimes. I don't know if I should tell the story, but uh, my wife and I have been saving for years and been wanting to move out in the woods. Because you all saw what we went through in the hurricane and how the hurricane destroyed uh, a lot. And, uh, well, I just don't want to go through that again. We were lucky that it only came within an inch from coming inside the water. But uh, so we found some properties and we made some uh, bids on them and it looked like we were going to get some. And then it fell through. We had signed a contract and everything and uh, went through the lawyer and then it seems like the people that own the property just went behind our back and sold it to somebody else. And it's just like, oh, I finally thought we were going to get someplace that we could get away as a family and go out and, you know, spend time in the, in the woods and camp and, and try to just let some of this anxiety and and stuff you know whew, get rid of some of this stress and it fell through and I was like oh I'm so discontented the price of property now is insane things are two to three times what they're actually worth on Zillow and places like that and it's just it's incredible what is happening well I found out that the state is buying up land and Bill Gates and people like that are buying up land and they're literally driving up the price so that little guys like us can't afford it Isn't that something it's weird really would like to have a farm someday but I think the Lord's coming so soon, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Amen. I think Jesus is coming so soon that it's just like, eh. But, you know, if we have six months or if we have six years, well, it would be nice in that time to, to be able to get away and have a place to go to get rid of some of this stress. But the Bible talks about those in debt, those that are discontented, and those that are distressed. Distressed. There's a lot of stress in this world. Are you stressed? My wife just built a box to plant in. And so we're going to plant strawberries and we're going to plant watermelons and we're going to plant some things. And uh, my wife said, honey, just getting your hands in the dirt and being outside and planting, just, just all the stress just rolls off. It just like falls off and you're just like, whew, I feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the way God intended it, to be outside in nature and get away. That's why I like to come out and preach, you know, sometimes to you, like right now underneath this beautiful magnolia tree and just... Uh, talk to you and, and get away and I understand and I get it and I know what it's like to, to go through stress and to go through those things it's very stressful I've been through a lot of times in my life when I was very 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 stressed um, when I was 14 mom and dad got divorced and I had to move to a new place Oklahoma and had to lose all my friends I had to start over and get new friends and all I could think about is I just want to go home I just want to get back to the water uh, my last name's Breaker, and, and I've been told that it comes from Breuker in German, which means one who dwells by the brook. And many, many, many breakers always live by the water. And we said we have salt water in our veins. So you just have to, you know, being in the water helps me a lot. But I, I just want to get this message to you and, and read you some things from the Bible and talk to you for a little bit because I understand what you're going through. I really do. I understand what it's like to be in debt be distressed and be discontented I know what it's like to have a lot of anxiety there were times in my life when it, I just couldn't sleep because your heart just beats really fast and you just got all these pressures on the world on you weighing down and you just lay there at night and stare at the ceiling and go man when is this gonna get any better <laughs> I understand and I know what you're going through well let me read you some scripture here real quick and as Christians we got to be careful well, as human beings, we've got to be careful because stress is a silent killer, they say. Stress can lead to heart attacks. Stress can lead to strokes. Stress can lead to problems. So we've got to learn to deal with it and not allow it to take over. But I want to read some verses to you, and I thought I'd just bring you some verses today to try to help you how to deal with anxiety. And uh, the best thing is, like we just read in, in 1 Samuel, find some other people that are like-minded and get together with them. And when you're with other Christians, well, a lot of times that helps a lot to be with other people that believe like you do and are just like, man, this world's nuts, but we, we're, we're not nuts. We're, we're not crazy. We, we, we haven't changed. Well, we're, our basis of fellowship is this book, you know, and get together with that. 
So let me read to you uh, Romans 8, 33 through 39. If you're distressed, if you're in debt, if you're downtrodden or distressed or discontented, remember these verses. Romans 8, 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Amen. If you're saved, you understand that, that God justifies us through his blood. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. I always remember that, that no matter how bad it gets, Jesus Christ is on your side if you're saved. And he's making intercession for you. And he's thinking about you. You know, the old saying is, when Jesus was on the cross, I was on his mind. He, he knew who I was before I was even born. And he loved me enough to die for me. Think about that who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. All throughout history, true Christians were murdered by ruthless, vile, wicked, evil people. And many Christians just took it and bled and died for their Savior, Jesus Christ. You realize that what you're going through will never compare to what Jesus Christ went through for you on the cross? And most likely, whatever you're going through doesn't even compare to what Christians past went through. Many of them were put on a stake and burned at a stake. Many of them, they were cut in pieces. Many of them were thrown to the lions. Uh, many of them were, were snuffed out alive in caves, and they burned the caves, and they died of suffocation, all because of their faith in Christ. Many of them had their heads cut off in, in uh, places like Africa in just the last hundred years. People have been suffering who are Christians. But Jesus loves us, and he'll take care of us. And you know, they might take our body, but they'll never take our soul. Amen? Look at what it says here in verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors in Christ. So they can do whatever they want. Bring it on. Bring your worst. You'll never take my soul. My soul's going to heaven, and I've got a mansion in heaven there. And you'll never get that. You'll never touch that. I have rewards in heaven that you can't take. Because I'm saved. And that's what the Bible promises me. That's why he says in verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for God's love and grace and mercy. I am His and He is mine. You probably know Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Do you realize that God has called us all according to his purpose? And that there's a reason that we're here? Sometimes I'll receive a phone call or an email from someone who says, Brother Breaker, I'm going through so much right now. I just don't know if I can take it. And I say, all right, get your Bible out. Let me show you that the Bible says you can take it. You can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. And they say, oh, I just, I feel like ending it. Don't do that. That's not the answer. See, God has a plan for all of us and a reason for us being here. And he also has a date that he's going to take us home. Don't try to change that date and go home early. Okay? That's not the answer. You have an influence on this wicked world. We need more godly Christian people in this world, not less. And you have an influence, whether you know it or not, on somebody else. And you can be someone who gives the gospel to someone else. You can be someone who shares the gospel and witnesses and preaches and teaches the truth. So don't check out early, amen? We're here. Find out what God would have us to do and do it. 1 Thessalonians 3, 7. The Bible is our comfort. That's why I always recommend people read the Bible. The Bible is our love letter from God. And the more we read the Bible, the more comforted we are. 1 Thessalonians 3, 7, Therefore, brethren, we are comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. By your faith. The comfort, Paul says, is when you believed. The thing that keeps me going and it's a blessing to me is when people send an email or a phone call or a letter in the mail and say, Brother Breaker, I got saved from your ministry. Thank you for preaching that precious blood. I never heard the gospel. I understood and I believe. I trust the blood for salvation. I just go, what? 
glory. It's just a blessing. The faith of others, people getting saved. That's what helps me move on and comforts me in my trials and tribulations and, and problems in this life. 1 Thessalonians 3, 8. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. And that's what we're here for, stand fast in the Lord. Don't give up your liberty. Don't give up your Bible. Don't give up your beliefs. Stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before God? There is joy in knowing that someone else came to Christ through your efforts. So are you passing out tracts? Are you witnessing? Are you telling other people about Jesus? Night and day praying exceedingly that we may, might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your face. So the Bible is real and God is real and God gives joy. And that joy comes through belief, through faith. The Bible says we do now therefore joy having received the atonement, Romans 5.11. So it's through the atonement of Christ that we get joy, the atonement of salvation. So are you saved? Have you come to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood? Well, if you're saved, I understand we still live in an awful, sinful, wicked world, and there's so many trials and tribulations and sad things that happen. But that's not an excuse to just sit down like a bump on a log and quit. Amen? God wants us to do something. Don't be Elijah and just go sit in a cave somewhere and say, well, I'm the only one left. <laughs> the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8, 10, I believe it is. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8, 10. So... Do you have that joy? You see, the devil wants to take that joy. The devil's greatest tool is discouragement. And what the devil wants to do is discourage you. So the question is, are you gonna let him? Are you gonna let him? The Bible says, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Can you give thanks in all things? In the good and the bad? You know, there's some things that happened in our life lately, and I just got down by the bed and just said, well, Lord, thanks for that. <laughs> Don't like it, don't want it, but thank you. <laughs> it must be what you want, there must be a reason, so thanks Lord, and leave it at that. So do you have Jesus Christ as your savior? Then you ought to be the happiest person in the world because you have a mansion in heaven and an eternity of joy with him. Now I know a lot of people are anxious, a lot of people are saying, oh Brother Breaker, I just I so badly want Jesus to come back. Me too, me too. And it's so easy to get that anxiety of just, oh, oh. Well, don't just sit there and think, well, it's gonna be over soon, so I'm just gonna sit here and wait. No, try to bring others with you, amen? It's like being on a ship that's sinking. You don't just sit down and go, well, we're all gonna die, so I'll just sit here and wait to die and let the ship sink. No, you're active trying to save people. Get them to the lifeboats, get them to the, to the ark, get them to Christ, and do your best to toil and labor for Lord. Because that's laying up in heaven rewards and you need to do that so are you doing that well the bible talks about comfort and the holy spirit is our comforter and you get in the bible and you read the bible and you're comforted in the scriptures by what the bible says the holy spirit is the comforter who will lead us and guide us and that's what you need is some comfort and the comfort comes from the word but also comfort comes from other christians and getting around them but also comfort comes from winning people to the Lord. Do you win people to the Lord? Have you ever won a soul to Jesus Christ? Have you ever told somebody about how to be saved? That's important. Jesus saves. And if you don't tell people that, who will? So it's our job to go out and to tell people how to be saved. And I want you to do that. I want you to do that. I want you to win souls to Jesus Christ because that's important. Now, why am I downtown Milton right now? Well, I want to give you a little story here. Right there, across the street. There used to be a, some men that would come out here who were uh, what's called lumberjacks. And uh, years ago, I used to work up at Piggly Wiggly. And Piggly Wiggly, we used to call it Hoggly Woggly, is a, uh, is a, uh, a grocery store that's up that way on Highway 90. It's actually pick and save or something like that now. But I would go out on my lunch break from time to time and would preach on the street corner out on Highway 90. And I came back, hey. I know, how you doing? You watch me? All right, man, somebody watching me on YouTube. So um, I would go out and preach on the street corner. One time I came back to work 
and uh, there was an old man sitting right there in front of the door crying he said boy I haven't seen that in years he said and I said sir why are you crying he said you just reminded me of what I remember seeing as a kid I said well tell me about it sir what what did you see as a kid he said when I was a boy back in the 40s he, he described this area right here he said right here every Sunday and, and Saturday and Sunday the men that were lumberjacks would come out here and they would stand right here and they would preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody that would come to town you see Milton comes from mill town and Milton we have a lot of trees around and there were all these different kinds of uh, tree companies what was it Sullivan Forsyth uh, I can't remember all the names I just read the history book last night of the history of Milton and the man said he used to remember as a kid walking down the street corner on the weekends and looking right over here and seeing these big old burly lumberjacks with their beards and their uh, plaid shirts holding their Bibles up and saying thus saith the Lord you must be born again Jesus died for your sins come to Jesus for salvation he died for you he loved you enough to die on the cross to pay for your sins why will you die won't you come to Jesus for salvation amen what a blessing to be here and know that somebody did that right here and to be able to do that as well what a blessing so it's just an amazing thing to think about and things like that comfort me to remember where we came from and to remember the Bible and to realize there are many many other Christians out there who were willing to preach and were not ashamed of Jesus Christ so this is the place where many old lumberjacks used to preach here in downtown Milton so the Bible tells us we need to do that have you ever preached on the street have you ever told anyone about Jesus Christ and salvation but God commended his love toward us and yet while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Jesus loved you enough that he shed his blood to pay for your sins where will you spend eternity heaven or hell smoking or non-smoking Jesus saves salvation is through Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross I am redeemed through the blood of Jesus. Salvation is through faith in what Jesus did. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus saves. Come to Jesus for salvation. Jesus saves. So can you imagine 40, 50, 60 years ago, somebody doing that same thing? Man, what a blessing. That gives me hope. That gives me comfort. That just thrills my soul to think about things like that. Do you, are you thrilled? Does that thrill your soul? See, salvation is through Jesus Christ. And we need to tell people that. And, uh, you know, some people might say, well, I, I'd have too much anxiety to go out and preach on the street. Well, I remember the first time I preached on the street, I was just so scared. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't. And, but the first time I just opened my mouth and started quoting scripture, the Lord just said, there it is, there it is. So I don't know what else to do but to preach and teach, read the book, and tell other people about salvation. That's what it's all about. Amazing, there was a guy right there. Hey, Robert Breaker, I watch you on YouTube. <laughs> wow, do you realize that you have an influence on other people? So the question is, are you using that influence? Are you going out and preaching and teaching? Are you telling other people how to be saved? I hope so. If not, then it'd be easy to be discouraged. But I'm encouraged, especially when I see more things like that. And I want to encourage you. It's not over yet. We're still here. We still have a voice. We still have an opportunity to win souls to Jesus. So the question is, will you do it? Will you do it? I've got a couple more verses here too. And I'd like to get to, but I need to cross the street here for a second. But uh, it's real important to come to Jesus Christ. Jesus saves! Jesus saves! Because only Jesus Christ can save your soul. I think I've said enough, really. <laughs> but I want to close with these verses, so as soon as I can cross this street, I'll do that. But I want to encourage you. It's very easy to get discouraged. But the only thing that matters in this life as a Christian is have you won somebody else to Jesus Christ? Have you, are you taking someone else to heaven with you? If you're saved, do you have any rewards in heaven? If you're not saved, boy, you got no hope. Do you realize that? You, I mean, you absolutely have no hope without Jesus Christ. 
a lot of times I get emails from people and they're all like, Breaker, you're such a liar, you're such a deceiver, there's no pre-trib rapture. And it's like, oh, so there's no hope. Okay, then what is your, what, what do you want us to do? Go blow our brains out? I mean, what are you talking about? There's no pre-trib rapture. The Bible says the body of Christ is the church. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is coming back for his bride. What kind of man says, honey, I love you, and I'd really like to come get you, but if you don't mind, I'm going to pass you off to this guy first, the Antichrist, and then I'll, 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 when he's done with you, I'll, I'll come get you, okay? Uh, no. See, that's not how it works. So according to the Bible, we have a hope. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse uh, 13 through 18, talks about the rapture. Then we, which are alive and remain, Paul includes himself. If that's not a pre-trib rapture, I don't know what is. And Paul says, comfort, wherefore comfort one another with these words. It is a comfort to know that the rapture is coming to take us out of here. And I am looking forward to that. I just cannot wait. And that's something that helps me with anxiety and with you know stress and all that is knowing, man, he's coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. The sooner he comes back, the better. So I'm waiting for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come back. And that's a comfort, knowing that he's coming to take us home. Are you looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God and Savior, Jesus Christ? I am. How about you? So we all need to wait on the Lord, but we also need to be out there working. The Bible says, occupy till I come. A lot of people don't define words nowadays, unfortunately, and a lot of people don't understand what the word occupy means. That's where we get our word occupation from. Occupy till I come doesn't mean sit down like a bump on a log and just wait for Jesus and do nothing. Occupy till I come means go out there and be occupied in serving the Lord and doing what he'd have you to do, which is what? Witnessing and telling others about salvation. So it's so important that we understand that. So let me read you a couple more verses. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 18. I want to read the whole chapter of 2 Corinthians 4. And I just want to encourage you the best way I know how. Don't get discouraged. You say, too late. I'm already distressed. I got so much stress. I'm so discouraged. Okay. Put the Lord first in your life and, and occupy and do your best to pass out tracts. You can go to fellowshiptractleague.org and get tracts for free and hand those out to people. Um, go out on the, on the corner and hold a sign up. Jesus saves. Uh, tell people, uh, print up little tracks that say the cloudchurch.org and, and you know Romans 325 and things like that. And tell people because the answer is Jesus Christ. All right, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And 2 Corinthians 4 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Don't faint. That's what the devil wants. When you get discouraged, he wants you to go, Oh, I can't go anymore and just stop. If he can get you to stop, then he can fill in the void. He can take over. So don't stop. Don't faint. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why are they lost? Because someone's not preaching the gospel. Who's supposed to be preaching the gospel? That, that's, that's us. That falls on us to do that. In whom the God, little g, Satan of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. There's a power in our earthen vessel, in our bodies. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is powerful, and it can be used by us witnessing to other people. Verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Paul says, we're going through all sorts of things, but we're not letting it get us distressed. And he says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. We're not in downtrodden and discouraged and in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. 
See, we're here as ambassadors of Christ, and what we do, we should do to try to point people to Jesus. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. Don't let the devil and the problems and the heartaches that you go through in this life get you down. We have eternal life. Let's act like it. Amen? We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. As a Christian, we're supposed to speak. We're supposed to say, hey, I can't be silenced. The Bible says this. Knowing, verse 14, that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and so shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, don't dwell on the things on this earth that are getting you down, but at the things which are not seen. Bible says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For the things which are seen are temporal. All this is going to pass someday. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We need to remember there's some things out there that are eternal. And guess what? Uh, those are the things that are going to last forever. So don't dwell on what's happening here. Think about eternity and say, okay, how can I affect eternity? How can I win somebody to Jesus Christ so I can take them to heaven with me? That's what it's all about. And I'll close with 2 Corinthians 13, 11. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Farewell. We say farewell, bye-bye. But farewell is fare thee well. What does that mean? Do right. Do well, and things will fare nicely for you. Farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. So we need to have the same mind. And our mind needs to be, Lord, we're here on this earth for a reason. And no, it's not a bed of roses. My dad used to say it like this, we're not sitting on a beach somewhere drinking mint juleps and eating bonbons. It's not, it's not the life we have. It's a life of suffering and heartaches and hurts and debt and distress and and people attacking, people putting down, people lying about us, the world hating us. But you know what? It's just a short time. And the big boy puts on his big boy pants. Of course, I put on my camouflage pants today. But a big boy puts on his big boy pants and says, you know what? I can take it because it's all for eternity's sake. And I'm going to go through this as a good soldier of Jesus Christ the best way I can. And I'm going to do right. And I'm going to affect eternity. And I'm going to lay up treasures in heaven. And I'm going to try to win people to Jesus Christ. And that's what I want to give to you today. That's what I want to share with you. And I want you to remember always Jesus and to put him first. Because it's all about Jesus Christ. All right, got to do this in Spanish. And I've left my Spanish Bible at home, so i got to figure out how to do that. But um, I was going to go to the park and, and do this and walk around in a circle. <laughs> But there were so many people at the park, I got a little bit of an anxiety. Oh man, there's so many people. Around here there's a lot of people too, but well, the Lord gave me a little bit of boldness to go out there and preach, so I did. So I'll close this with a beautiful uh, sight of what we call Blackwater River. What a beautiful place. What a nice place to be from, amen? And what a great opportunity to tell all these people about Jesus. If those old lumberjacks preached out there in the corner, then I'll preach out on the corner. And I'll tell people about Jesus Christ. So I just want to encourage you. I know you're going through some stuff. It'll be over soon. The rapture's coming very, very soon. I hope this year. But I honestly don't see how it could be more than four, five, six years out. It's got to be soon. Israel is going to celebrate 73 years as a nation in May. Bible says that a generation between 70 to 80 years. Jesus said this generation shall not pass. So you look at all that and you go, oh wow. <laughs> it just seems like if the tribulation is seven years, and I believe it is, then well then the rapture's got to happen so that in 2028 Jesus can come back in Armageddon. So we're looking at all the things happening in the world. We're looking at everything. Folks, we still have freedom to preach and teach the gospel. And the gospel spread the most in times of suffering. 
And there was more revival in bad times than any other time. Something about when people begin to suffer and go through things, then they're more receptive to the gospel. So it's important that we remember that. The devil wants us to remain silent and not say anything. Well, that's more of a reason to stand up and speak out. And that's what we need to do. We need to speak out and tell people that Jesus saves. And we must come to Jesus for freedom, for salvation, for peace, for grace, for forgiveness. Because it's only through Jesus Christ that we have eternal life. And I want you to know that. I want you to understand that. I want you to help me by going out to others. Well, not just me. Help God. Uh, I would encourage you to, to make a little track or... I think it's called Vista Print. You can go to Vista Print. I'm oh, going under the bridge right now. You can go to Vista Print and print up little, you know, um, cards. And uh, the cards say, you know, the cloudchurch.org and the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And get those out. Hand those out. Get more people to come and hear the message. And it's just been a blessing to me lately to hear how many people have gotten saved through the preaching and the teaching that I've been doing on YouTube. And again, it's not about me. It's just about the Lord. I don't know what else to do, folks, but to tell people the truth. And that's all I want to do. And uh, I want you all to be on the same page with me and tell others the truth as well. All right, I'll stop there. God bless you all. I'll close with downtown Milton in the background and a pretty little gazebo over there. Truly, we are blessed to live in such a beautiful little town. But uh, what good is it all? If this is all there is, there's got to be more to it, and there is. There's eternal life and a place in heaven with Jesus Christ for all eternity. And that's the message. We need to get the gospel out. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Salvation is through faith in his blood, Romans 3, 25. You must receive the atonement, Romans 5, 11. All right, folks, God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. Please remember, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. God bless. Bye-bye.